The volcano in Yellowstone is often called a supervolcano. The Natural History Museum in London defines a supervolcano as a volcano that has the capacity to produce a magnitude 8 eruption on the volcanic explosivity index, discharging more than 1,000 cubic kilometers, 240 cubic miles of material. Let's find out what if the Yellowstone volcano erupted tomorrow. The most powerful volcanic eruption that occurred in recent history was the 1991 eruption of Pinatubo in the Philippines. For comparison, this eruption was rated a 6 on the Volcanic Explosivity Index, two orders of magnitude, or 100 times smaller than the benchmark eruption for a supervolcano. If Yellowstone were to erupt anytime soon, the consequences could be dire. The eruption would have widespread ramifications, reaching the entire globe. Ash from the eruption is the biggest concern for volcanologists. This ash could coat a surrounding region 500 miles, 800 kilometers, across with a thickness of more than 4 inches, 10 centimeters. This would clog water sources and destroy local agriculture. Along with the ash, the gas would also be emitted. If the explosion were large enough, this ash and gas could be flung all the way into the stratosphere, blocking sunlight and lowering global temperatures by a few degrees for a number of years. In addition, according to the U.S. Department of the Interior, the surrounding states of Montana, Idaho, and Wyoming would be affected by pyroclastic flows, the deadliest volcanic hazards, extremely hot and fast-moving mixtures of solidified lava, volcanic ash, and hot gases. As the mix amassed and rose over thousands of years, the pressure eventually would push the ground up into a dome shape and create cracks along the edges. As that pressure was released through the cracks, the eruption could be expected to kill as many as 90,000 people immediately. Equally as frightening is the nuclear winter that some experts say could blanket the U.S. and other parts of the world if Yellowstone were to blow. Sulfuric gases released from the volcano would spring into the atmosphere and mix with the planet's water vapor. Falling temperatures would do a number on our food supply, decimating crops and throwing the food chain out of whack by leaving those at the bottom with little to eat. When Pinatubo erupted in 1991, it cooled the planet by about 1 degree Celsius, 1.8 degrees Fahrenheit, for a few years. The Tambora eruption in 1815 cooled the planet enough to damage crops around the world, possibly leading to famines in some areas. And those were relatively tiny eruptions compared to what a supervolcano is, in theory, capable of. The good news is that an eruption of this scale isn't likely in any of our lifetimes. Yellowstone last erupted about 640,000 years ago, and the U.S. Geological Survey says the probability that it will blow its top again is about 0.00014% each year. Michael Poland, a geophysicist in charge at Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, says that the Yellowstone volcano is being actively monitored so that his team could spot warning signs before an eruption would occur. He explains that the Yellowstone volcano will not erupt anytime soon, noting that there must be enough eruptive magma beneath the surface and enough pressure to cause the magma to ascend, neither of which currently exists. According to Poland, Yellowstone is relatively stable right now. This is perhaps the most common misconception about Yellowstone and about volcanoes in general. Volcanoes don't work on timelines, Michael Poland said. More often than not, a volcano's activity is a direct consequence of the magma supply. Some volcanoes do seem to have regular eruptions, but this is because the magma supply is relatively constant. Think Kilauea in Hawaii or Stromboli in Italy, Poland said. His team keeps track of subterranean activity as warning signs for possible eruptions. They track seismicity, the frequency of earthquakes, and ground deformation. Poland states that thousands of earthquakes over a short period of time, a few weeks, coupled with extreme ground formation, tens of centimeters over the same time period, would be noteworthy. He notes that park-wide changes in geyser activity and thermal and gas emissions would be telling as well. Thus, his team also tracks the temperatures of thermal features. They look at overall thermal emissions from space, collect gas and water to assess their chemistry over time, and track stream and river flow and chemistry.
Research recently published in Science claims that the Yellowstone volcano holds more liquid molten rock, or magma, than previously estimated. Poland explains that this result is not cause for concern, but merely confirms what scientists already knew about Yellowstone. He says that the initial findings found that the magma chamber beneath Yellowstone was only 5 to 15 percent molten, whereas the new research claims it is closer to 16 to 20 percent molten. The conflicting results used the same data set, but the larger number resulted from the use of more advanced analysis techniques. Poland is reassured by these results, and his take-home message is that Yellowstone's magma chamber is mostly solid, meaning that the likelihood of a consequential and imminent eruption is low. To see beneath the surface, scientists use information gleaned from the speeds of different types of seismic waves as they travel through the ground. Seismic waves are known as S-waves, are particularly useful when looking for melt because these waves slow down considerably when they encounter any liquid, such as water or molten magma. Researchers use the time it takes for an S-wave to travel from a transmitting source to a receiver compared with the time it takes for other types of seismic waves that don't slow down in liquids to estimate how much melted magma there is. Before the rise of supercomputers, scientists would imagine the seismic waves as moving along a simple line from point A to point B. Then they would convert the travel time for the wave to a velocity, and from there estimate some amount of liquid present. But waves don't really move in a line, they radiate outward, they diffract. When encountering a subsurface feature that could slow them down, they might bend around it rather than barrel through it. Those additional wave movements add a lot of fine detail to the picture, but they also require a lot of computational power. Today, such calculations are possible. So Ross McGuire, a geophysicist at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign, and colleagues used this more modern way of looking at seismic waves, called full waveform tomography, to reanalyze existing seismic data from Yellowstone. Peering between 3 and 8 kilometers underground, the team recorded S waves as slow as about 2.1 kilometers per second, occurring near the center of Yellowstone's caldera. That's appreciably slower than previous estimates of 2.7 kilometers per second, Ross McGuire said. It's not certain how the melted part of the magma is distributed, but the most likely scenario is that most of the liquid is isolated, with tiny amounts of melt locked away in the spaces between the hardened crystals. The critical melt fraction at which the volcano might be prepared to erupt is more like between 35 and 50 percent, the team notes. We're not absolutely pushing the limit in terms of what we can do, Maguire says, but we're getting kind of close. One interesting implication, Maguire says, is that Yellowstone may spend large portions of its life cycle with higher melt fractions than thought. A new study has found that before a catastrophic eruption takes place, the ground will likely begin to swell up. And the study isn't talking about a few inches. It is talking about possibly several or more meters. The scientists also believe that this swelling will take place for many years prior to the next eruption, possibly as many as several hundred years. The big takeaway here is that while the next Yellowstone eruption will change life on Earth for a while, it will still exist and there will very likely be an incredible warning period to prepare. So that's it. Please like, share, and comment your thoughts below if you liked this video. Remember to subscribe to see our next video. Stay safe, and we will be back soon with another